we're here at the Bernal Elites Conference in New York City, and I'd like to welcome Michael Drude from Automated Data Inc. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So to get things started, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about the ADI platform and how you leverage LLMs and machine learning for data integration improvements? Absolutely. We use large language models as a part of our data integration uh, capabilities. But before we get there, uh, what I'd like to just give is kind of the use case and the value proposition. So the problem that we see is that companies do not have a good way of getting to business intelligence, let alone artificial intelligence. Their data is in silos, their data is fractured, there's quality issues, um, there's a lack of connectivity between systems, there might be poor reliable identifiers, um, and those are the problems that we're kind of going after. And we're using large language models to solve a big portion of that problem. So what we do is we connect into the data source, and then we use large language models to semantically profile the data and statistically profile the data. And then what that means is the machine, the large language model, is actually getting business context around the data. Is it a company? Is it a person? Is it, you know, what kind of entity is it? And then what we've done is we've built out a number of different entity resolution and data matching frameworks that use those semantics to automate the matching and the joining process. So imagine now a data analyst can simply install software, connect to data, join data, get to business intelligence very quickly and efficiently. That's the problem we're going after. Phenomenal, thank you for that. Now, taking a step back, there's so much new innovation and new tech happening right now at a rapid pace. How do you anticipate the actual adoption of this, these technologies? and how will it affect the relationship between clients and data providers? That's a great question. So we're seeing, especially with the move to cloud and you've got data sharing and all these concepts that are running in the cloud databases, Snowflake, Databricks, they're all supporting this concept of data sharing. And what that means is data doesn't have to be materialized anymore. I don't have to write APIs to go get access to my data, right? It's just there, you, you, you provision it and the data is in your account and you can start working on it. It's an amazing transformation for people that are in the data business. Um, it also means that there's a, a move towards uh, getting bite-sized pieces of your data. Like you don't have to buy the entire data source anymore. You can buy what you're, you know, what you're ultimately using. So from an economic standpoint over time, it should be much more efficient as well. What we're seeing is you know, now the, the relationship between a data supplier and a customer is closer than ever because I'm not buying this FTP based, you know, file that's being delivered to me in whole and I've got to, now I've got to write a bunch of code to integrate it. Instead, what we're seeing is I can have a much richer experience with my data providers. They can customize their deliveries on my Snowflake account or on my Databricks account. It's a much nicer, richer experience and it's a little bit more economical as well. Excellent. Thank you for that. And we've been speaking a lot about AI and data, including at this panel, some great insights from the discussions here. Yeah. Besides artificial intelligence, what key trends do you anticipate over the next few months or years that will affect the data and analytics industry? The, the first panel this morning at the Barrel Conference was spot on. Uh, everyone was talking about the AI use cases that are being put into practice in firms. But let's be honest, the adoption rate in production is less than 5% at an enterprise level, probably closer to 0%. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but a big reason is data quality. Uh, it's probably, you know, it's a combination of the things that I mentioned earlier. You've got siloed data, you've got fractured data, you don't have reliable identifiers, the quality is suspect. How do you solve that problem? That's the foundational problem that needs to get solved before you go after AI. So what I think is going to be happening is a lot of companies are going to be investing a lot of money and time and energy to clean up their data, create a high quality data product that then can be put into use as a part of BI or AI or any other use case. Nice. Thank you. One other question to wrap up. Looking ahead, are there any projects or initiatives you want to share with us that's going to impact uh, the op operations uh, in, in your industry? Yeah, I think, I think the whole notion of, of this foundational data technology that prepares your data for this world where you're, you're building business and operational use cases on top of it. You're automating, you're driving business intelligence, you're driving Gen AI, whatever the thing is, you need it to be high quality. So I think people are gonna spend, as I just mentioned, a lot more time and energy on this foundational layer. Uh, and I don't think we've seen all of the, you know, all of the different tools and all the rest of it. You've, you've got firms building ontological models now, you've got semantic layers, you have vector databases, like there's all these technologies that are emerging, emerging to make this thing happen. Um, 
So I think that's all very exciting. And in terms of our role and what we're trying to do, the first thing is connect your data, create a high quality data product. The second thing that we're hearing from our clients is, even though something matches, now we've got attribute level issues. So let's say an ISIN is matching across two fixed income data sets. Are the coupons accurate? Are the terms and conditions the same? So we're being asked to not only just do that matching and that resolution, but now look at the attributes of, you know, of that much wider uh, record and make sure that those are all aligned as well. It's more of a reconciliation play than an any resolution play, um, but that's one of the things we're being asked to work on. The other thing we're being asked to work on is, Models aren't perfect, right? There will be breaks in terms of when you're trying to match an entity or match data. And what happens then is you have humans that are interceding and trying to investigate what the problem is and correct it. So we want to bring more AI to, to that problem so we can make you know, the, the human in the loop process much more efficient as well, not just the matching process. Nice, that's some nice insights there. That was Michael Drude from Automated Data here at the Barrel Conference. Uh, thank you, Mike, for joining us. Thank you.